What's up guys, CP Mod here back with another video and today we're here with a topic that's been a long running joke for many PC enthusiasts and a total mess for those friends and well, not so lucky people who listen to them, and that is what actually happens when you delete System32 on your desktop or laptop PC. Now, we all know that things do go wrong and end up being bricked of a computer, but let's face it, jokes aside, what actually happens in real time when you hit delete? on System32. Well, today we're going to be taking a look at exactly that, breaking things down and seeing what happens when you finally hit that one delete key, because as many of us like to say delete System32, not exactly all of us actually want to do it to actually find out. And today, in simple terms, we're literally just going to delete that folder. But before we do that, what is System32? Why is it so important? And why does it cause our system to die? Well, in simple terms, it is a key system directory that is located on the C drive and contains Windows system files and some software program files and even some executables for programs like, for example, Notepad. Now, this is vital for operation of the system as if this folder is gone, then obviously those key folders, key files, and even key applications just don't exist anymore and your computer can't run. Heck, even some really important programs, like for instance Adobe files, might end up in System32. So it's pretty important there. I guess maybe if you don't use Adobe, then it's not so important. But my point being, some of your most important applications store data in here, and when it's gone, the system is also too gone. Now, the actual naming scheme for System32 might suggest that there's only 32-bit applications in here, and let's face it, a lot of us use 64-bit, so hey, who cares if 32-bit programs are gone? Well, actually, you'd be wrong, because System32 actually houses 64-bit libraries and files and bits and pieces, whereas SysWow64 actually holds the 32-bit ones. Yeah, if you thought Microsoft couldn't actually count when they're naming their Windows 7, 8, 10, well, 64 holds 32, but 32 holds 64. Either way, the only real way I remember between the two is you say, wow, 64 doesn't actually have any 64-bit files in there. That's the only reason why I remember the difference between the two. And even then, it's pretty hard. But either way, pretty important files that hold key application information, and once they're gone, your system is also too gone. So, okay then, cool story, but... What happens when we delete it? Let's hit that delete key, let's do it now. So let's fire up our Windows 10 machine, we'll hit delete and, oh, that's really not so great. So simply just hitting delete on this particular folder doesn't really do anything because the actual folder is protected by system permissions. So if you're thinking just hitting that delete key, it's not gonna work without some modifications in terms of the permissions. Thankfully, Windows has caught on with the whole, uh, well, whole running joke with this whole deleting System32, and for quite a while now has actually been protecting this folder. So, I guess thumbs up for Microsoft for doing this, but all in all, permissions are pretty much going to stop you there. But, we can't stop there, I'm making a YouTube video. So I went ahead and fired up my, one of my least favorite programs being PowerShell, and we went to town changing the permissions right here. In simple terms, I just added my user account that I made that was an admin to the permissions so I could modify these particular files. Now, it's not really the greatest thing to be doing, and you probably should just leave your file permissions as they are, but again, we really wanna see what happens here. Worst case scenario, so once again, let's right click on that folder now that we've got permissions, hit delete, and ah, again, what a fail. Mainly because, again, the system is actually using these files. As I said, these are key folders and files, so if they're in use, Windows itself can't delete files in use. Just like opening up a Word document, you can't delete that Word document from a folder unless the file is actually closed. Same sort of our theory applies here. Because Windows is running, you can't actually delete it itself. Now, if we were outside the Windows operating system, sure, you click it once, it's done. But because we're inside of Windows, not really going to work like that. So for me, in this video, I'm just going to jump inside the folder and start manually going through each folder to see which ones are being used, which ones aren't, and just deleting the ones that aren't, uh, that aren't aren't being used. Now, yes, because I already fired up PowerShell, I could probably just write a PowerShell script to just run through all the files and hit delete on them and it would be way quicker, but I don't really want a script on any of my computers that can do this type of a function, so I'm gonna leave that one to you guys to imagine up. Anyway, at this point, now that we've done some manual deletion, we can see that the system's still actually on. We've deleted quite a bit out of the System32 and we didn't experience a blue screen or we didn't have the computer crash, but if we take a closer look at the system, it's definitely suffering quite a bit. Sure, it still looks great, 
but nothing actually works. If we hit the start button, things don't work properly. Right clicking on menus, things don't open. Trying to open programs don't open not really looking that great. So let's say for instance, you've deleted all the system 32 or as much as you can, and you've somehow managed to restart the system, even though there's no start menu that working properly. Well, we're going to run into this where the system doesn't exactly work and is totally not a fan of running without that system 32 folder correctly built. Now, in a lot of cases, it's going to go and try and do a startup repair, which is obviously going to fail because we've deleted so much. It's just not possible to get it back. And that's kind of it. I mean, you could try and install the bootable medias and do all that stuff, but there's a high chance it just won't come back and you basically ruin the entire system. Now, to be clear, the actual files, so like your Word documents, your pictures and stuff, aren't actually deleted. It's just Windows itself won't boot. So if somehow you've managed to get yourself into this scenario, don't worry too much. Plug in a USB stick uh, with Linux on it, boot into Linux and pull your key files off. You'll be totally fine. The data's still there, it's just Windows itself won't actually boot. So that brings us to the conclusion of this video. In a normal system that hasn't been completely modified, it's basically impossible to delete System32, again without changing a bunch of permissions, either through the Windows UI, or as I did here today in like one PowerShell script, which makes life so much easier. And even once you do, you can't just delete the actual folder itself. You have to manually go through and delete each individual file until the PC basically locks up and doesn't work, and then you have to force reset started to actually get it to there. Unfortunately, it's not just a massive blue screen and sort of the computer freaks out and then stops, kind of just keeps running until the very end. And personally, I wasn't expecting this kind of a finish. But guys, thanks for watching. Let me know down in that comment section, what do you think I should delete next? Because man, Windows has a lot of things that we can delete. So let me know down below and I'll catch you all in the next one.